Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Jenna. Welcome to another Devlog Monday on a Tuesday again. I hope you all have had an amazing week. I have had a uh, about a five out of ten week. I don't know. Does that sound bad? Five out of ten? That's like average, but it but it it doesn't sound very good. No, I think I had a six out of 10 week. For those of you who don't know, this is basically like a little series on my channel where I just talk about what I've done over the last week, specifically relating to the Hazel engine. Basically just talking about the new features and how the actual implementation of all of that went. Now, of course I am referring to Hazel Dev, which is like the Patreon supported version of Hazel. If you wanna get access to it, then you can help support the development of Hazel and everything here on my channel by going to patreon.com slash the channel. The link will be in the description below and you will get access to all of this source code as well as an amazing community where we kind of help each other and talk about game engines and stuff like that. Now, this week, I mean, a lot of things have happened. And actually last week, I'll leave the link to the last devlog up there. I talked about how we are doing some very exciting things. And I think next week, realistically, is when I'm going to start kind of talking about them. This is still exciting, don't get me wrong. This video is exciting, but the kind of stuff that we've been working on is like, I think next week, like you, you're gonna wanna be around for that. Basically, as you guys know, I have been kind of working towards getting Hazel to a point where I can actually start creating content with it. Specifically, I want to be able to build a game. One of my goals for Hazel is like, hopefully within a year from now, I would like to build a small game and release it on Steam. Like that's just the goal because I want to prove that Hazel is capable of shipping a game. Um, and I mean, who wouldn't want to ship a game with their own engine? That's kind of the whole point of this game engine. And so I've got a really exciting idea for a game. And this is kind of, I guess, what I'm, what I'm working on really over like the last few weeks and months, I guess, is building the engine to the point where it can support the idea that I have. Now, the actual idea that I have is uh, as small or as large as you want it to be. And of course, I'm not gonna reveal the idea right now. You guys will have to just wait and kind of see how the game actually turns out. But um, what I mean is like, it's not, it's not very big in scope, but it can be, it can grow, you can iterate over it and you can add as many or as little features as you want. And it should like the core mechanics will still kind of stay the same. So in that sense, I'm kind of excited to start working on this. Now, as you know, for a game to be playable, it's kind of like, I don't want to just play it in the editor. That would be a bit weird. Hey guys, why don't you download the Hazel engine and then like open the editor and then go file open and then load the game and play it. That's... That's weird. So instead, we obviously want some kind of runtime. We obviously want to be able to play the game outside of the editor as like a standalone product. And that is what I worked on this week amongst like 50 other things. So without further ado, let's take a look at what this looks like. So this is Hazelnut. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. This is like the editor um, for Hazel. If I go ahead and just load a scene, we'll go with the sponsor demo. Uh, this is just an example that I'm going to use here. So let's talk about the architecture of this scene a little bit. So it's pretty simple. Um, we've got the actual model, but then the model itself is also like hooked up with Nvidia physics as an actual, um, like as an actual mesh collider. It's very, very far from optimal for physics use. Just, just so that we're clear, we're actually working on ways now to be able to, um, yeah, specify essentially what we want to use as like physics submeshes versus like rendering submeshes. I'll have more videos on that later. But basically, if I click to select, I added this little wireframe view just so we could see for now, you know, what's selected. That will, of course, change. But you can see that like a lot of these things are very, very dense, which isn't very good for physics. I mean, there should just be a box collider around this, um, you know, this little plant here. But instead, there's like a bunch of triangles and all that stuff. But anyway, point is, there's a physics collider on this. If we look at Sponsor itself, you can see we have a mesh collider and a rigid body. The the point of that is just to make it walkable. So if I look at player, um, we've got parented entities, by the way, I don't think I've talked about that. Uh, thanks to Peter and a few other people on the team as well. We've got parented uh, entities now, which is great. So we can parent the camera to the player, which is nice. Um, but you can see that over here, uh, for example, um, you know, we have a rigid body, a dynamic rigid body and a capsule collider. Now the player is actually located, I think, if I hit F to kind of focus-ish, um, then I can uh, see the player. It's actually, he's actually here, right? If I show a gizmo, you'll be able to see where he is. I, I got rid of the mesh component, the actual mesh component on this. So there's a mesh component that will render something. This is not actually being rendered anymore. Uh, it just kind of appears here. But one thing I did add was uh, physics colliders. So if I turn that on, you can actually see what the physics collider looks like in a very kind of NVIDIA physics -y green. Um, I'm sure that's not actually the NVIDIA physics green, but it's green and that's the point. Um, so that that kind of capsule collider is what collides with the mesh collider of the actual um, 
sponsor model and that's how we can kind of walk around. And then we have a, have a C-sharp script called FPS player, which uh, is basically what controls the camera and what kind of all the behavior that you see, the WASD keys, the, the mouse, um, that's all kind of scripted in there. And by the way, if you guys are watching and you are patrons and you do have access to Hazel Dev, go ahead and try and run this, right? Like that's the whole point. This is on this is on the master branch right now. You can just clone that basically, follow the setup instructions, um, you know, build it in release preferably so that it's fast. And then uh, if you go into asset scenes and sponsor demo, that's what I dragged in here. So definitely try this out and let me know how it goes for you guys. Um, we don't really, I don't have any AMD graphics cards to test on. So at the moment, it's a little bit um, crashy, I think. Not very happy um, in general with AMD cards, like Hazel, I mean. So I definitely need to get an AMD card uh, into the office as soon as possible, I think, so I can start testing on that. But basically, um, other than that, it should be fine. And you can actually run it in the runtime, which I'm about to show you as well. So anyway, so we have that script. Um, so if I hit play, you know, I'll be dropped into this world. I can kind of move around, you know, I can jump, I can interact with the world, whatever. Um, that's all kind of here. Um, and it's all kind of in a runtime state. It's been like that for a while. You know, I can do whatever I want. It captures the mouse, all that's good. But obviously we can only run it inside the editor. So how do we run it outside the editor? Well, first of all, let's just like modify the scene quickly. I don't know, let's just make it slightly different. Maybe I'll add like a torus. Um, we'll get rid of the me mesh collider on that because we don't need it. Um, make it a little bit big, put it into the center of the world, just kind of for fun, I guess. So you can see this is like a dynamically modified uh, scene. Let me just not maybe show the selection um, so we can see what it looks like. All right, beautiful. We've got a nice little torus here. So control S to save the scene. And then I'm just going to close like hazelnut, right? So we're going to close it. Um, that took a while. And then hazel runtime. I'm going to set that as a startup project and it's just set to load that kind of sponsor scene. So if I hit F5 and run that, then you can see that I'm dropped into the world and we're actually full screen here, which is pretty cool. There's no title bar, nothing like that. Um, there's our Taurus that we just added, right? It's all completely kind of, um, I guess, uh, running in like a runtime fashion with no editor, nothing whatsoever. And then all I had to really do was just launch the application and this is what we're greeted with. So this is kind of, I guess, you know, the beginnings of what will become, you know, the Hazel runtime. I do want to mention a few things. Like, first of all, this isn't really like the Hazel runtime, right? I know I said it was, and it is in a sense, but what I mean is like, this is just loading the source assets. This is still loading like the FBX model of like, I think it might actually even be an OBJ, which is a disaster, um, of the sponsor scene and like, you know, maybe the Taurus FBX or whatever. It's still loading all of that. The scene files are still like written in YAML and they're still loading all that text, right? This is not packaged, it's not like, it's not built to be like a runtime kind of binary format just yet. This is still all the raw source assets. Now to someone actually playing this though, so like for the purposes of like play testing, not exactly like distribution, it's the same thing, right? Also, I'm not sure if uh, it might seem a little bit laggy in the screen capture. I'm not 100% sure. It's definitely like running at VSync here, but um, maybe because it's like actually full screen and not like borderless windowed. Um, it might be, I might not be using game capture for that. But anyway, the point is that, um, you know, for someone who's play testing this, this gets the job down. That's kind of the whole point of this, right? We want to be able to actually build a game in this and then like play it full screen as if you were playing a game. Um, and that's obviously what this uh, achieves. Now, in in the future, though, of course, we would want to, you know, basically author, I guess, or like build our assets into like a Hazel, like Hazel model format and all of that stuff, Hazel textures, stuff like that, that are basically ready to go in a good kind of GPU um, friendly way so that we can just load that or memory map the files and load them in. You know, maybe we want all the assets in like a binary blob with like a virtual file system and like compression. And there's so much kind of, you know, runtime distribution stuff that we need and we will obviously get to that stage, but this is kind of just the beginning, you know, being able to, um, being able to run uh, like that. It takes a while to, to switch from full screen to not full screen on the video capture, but in real life, it's, it's completely different. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that little look at the Hazel runtime. As I mentioned, if you are a patron, then just go ahead and like try it out for yourselves because all of this is pushed, it's ready to go. You can try it out on your computer and you can look through the code, obviously. Um, huge thank you as always to everyone who does help support the Hazel project. Um, I think it's really cool. Uh, I always say this, but it is really cool. Like, you know, what we're able to achieve here. And as I mentioned, like, as we start actually using Hazel to create stuff, um, I think it's gonna be amazing. I'm 
I'm definitely going to start making some more videos, I think, that are actually going to be about like content creation and uh, and stuff like that and my journey, I guess, with that. So it's going to be really cool, I think, when we get to that stage. Anyway, huge thank you to everyone. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed and I will see you next time. Goodbye.